Hey guys, welcome to the Alpina B7. I've had this car for three days now and I've driven it everywhere you can imagine. I'm currently driving it through the Austrian Alps with about <laughs> three or four meters of snowbanks either side of me as you can probably see on the camera. It is insane. This location is the best I've ever been to. I mean, it's just, it's dream world. The tarmac's dry-ish because the snow's melting. But this car is just something else. I've fallen completely in love with it. I love Alpinas, as you know. I just couldn't get my head around something the size of a 7 Series being so agile, so incredible, so sporty, yet it still manages to keep all of the 7 Series luxury, waftability, and if anything, with the Alpina suspension setup, like they do with all of their models, it almost improves the plushness of it. So we're getting a better ride, but yet we're getting a sportier car as well. It really is an impressive bit of kit. I just, I can't tell you how incredible this car is. I've done about a thousand miles in it now. And every mile I grow fonder. <laughs> just got so much go. We're currently at nearly 3,000 meters, so what, that's 10,000 feet. We've got a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 under the hood, so it should be struggling up here in this altitude. You know, we should be losing some power, but it still feels pretty damn healthy to me. The performance on tap is mind-blowing. Again, they quote an 0 to 60 time of 3.7 seconds. It will do that 3.7 seconds to 60 miles an hour in any condition because of the X-Drive. Now, let's talk about the X-Drive. I've tried the X-Drive in a few variants, most recently on the 5 Series launch in Spain and the new G30. And I wasn't blown away by the X-Drive, but it worked very well. You know, it's very capable. It still felt like a BMW, but it wouldn't drift like a BMW. It wouldn't get tail happy mid-corner you put your foot in the accelerator and it would kind of pull out almost like a front wheel drive car which was safe and you know uh, very efficient but not what you'd expect in a bmw so alpina have got hold of that x drive system and fettled with it to basically give a lot more rear biased power so coming out of slow turns especially it gets very tail happy majority of people that are going to buy these cars are probably going to you know want them as their cross-continent car cruising car it's the ultimate gt that would sit five people in in comfort four people in ridiculous luxury but the good thing with this is it's a long wheelbase 7 series x drive we're talking well over two tons i think it's 2.1 tons 2.2 probably 2.3 with me in it but it drives and handles like it weighs 1500 kilos and it goes <laughs> It goes like it weighs a ton. It's just so fast, it really is. And as I say, I've had this car for three days now. Usually when you jump into a powerful car, now I've driven a lot of powerful cars, after about two long days in a particularly powerful car, you don't get bored of the power, but you get used to the power, so it becomes less surprising. In this thing, both Robert and myself, every time we get on the power, we look at each other and we giggle. It's that sort of power. And as a driver, it feels fast. Having Robert along, I've spent a lot of time in the passenger seat and in the back seats. I can vouch for what it feels like to be driven around in one of these very fast. And when you put your foot down, launch control or top of second, top of third gear, when the turbos are spinning, the acceleration is just ridiculous and it really gives you that sort of you kind of lose air in your chest and I'm not exaggerating you do get that both of us have done it over and over again we're like no no you can feel it's like someone pushing on your chest it's that violent look top a second now I'll put my foot down it is so fast I, I can't tell you now 
I have to talk about the fact that we've had this car also on winter rubber for the entirety of the three days so far. So we're limited to top speeds, we're limited to grip to a certain extent, and we hadn't done much sort of mounted driving or even many sort of tight corners or on the limit corners until we arrived in Austria today and on this pass that I'm going up and down. I can't begin to imagine how good it would be on a lower profile summer tire with bigger wheels in fact. Now I've had a lot of people asking me on Instagram or commenting on the wheels about this particular car that I'm in and at first I thought they were the standard fitment wheels but actually these are the smaller winter alloys with the winter tires on them. Now let's talk a little bit more about that engine that's under the hood. So it starts life as a 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo that's found in the F10 M5, the X5M, the X6M, the M6 Coupe, the N6 Grand Coupe, all of those cars. So it's the top of the line M engine, if you like. In that form, it puts out around 550, 560 brake horsepower. The one under the Alpina bonnet is rated at 600 brake horsepower. I think, personally, it feels like a lot more than that. It feels closer to 700, and I'm sure like most Alpina engines, they're a very conservative figure. Now, how do they squeeze that extra power out of that engine? They put their own pistons in, they change the spark plugs for really super special ones, they play with the manifold, they play with the inlet and outlet to the turbos. They do a number of things to do with the cooling, including this car has three extra radiators compared to the standard M car setup. And it needs it because of all that extra power and also the fact that it's hauling around extra weight. I recently spent some time in an X6M actually, so I'm very familiar with that 4.4. And it's a, an extremely powerful engine, whether it's the BMW M, M engine variant or whether it's the one underneath this bonnet. But what it does suffer from, especially in the heavier cars like the X5 and the X6M, it has a fair amount of turbo lag. When the boost comes on, it's as strong as anything, but low down, it's, it hasn't got much pickup. Whereas this engine, it feels totally different. It's got so much torque down low, and yet it revs all the way up super clean towards the 7,000 RPM rev limiter. I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they've managed to keep, obviously it's the two turbos, so one probably works down low, the other one works up high, but there's just a constant surge of power and it's incredible. It's a real masterpiece and it is what sets this car off, in my opinion. The other thing that this engine is incredible with is sound. Now, unfortunately, these days, aside from people like Lamborghini, everybody is turbocharging their engines. More efficiency, more power, you know, it makes sense. AMG have got it very right, you know, they've still managed to keep some very organic sounding sort of V8 sounds. I think the BMW 4.4 that we're talking about, on the M cars, it's got its own unique sound, but a lot of that is piped around the cabin. You know, some of it is fake sound. It's not organic V8 sound. Now in this car, everything you hear is organic. Okay, it's got a very trick, special Akrapovich exhaust, but that's genuine sound that's coming out of it and genuine sound that's coming through the cabin. It's a very subtle sound. It's a very gentle V8 when you want it to be. Almost silent when you've got it in comfort on the motorway in eighth, you know, doing no revs, being reasonably efficient as well. But the minute you put your foot down, it turns into an absolute beast. And the sound that it pumps out and the pops and bangs and crackles, and they're all organic. There's nothing, you know, there's, there's no fakery there. It's all genuine sounds and in fact, the timing of me talking about the engine and the sounds is going to be perfect because we're just about to go through a tunnel so hopefully it's going to be clear. I'll put the window down because it'd be rude not to. This is genuine sound, okay? Right, ready? I 
hope the mic is picking that up. It's just awesome, isn't it? Listen to that. I went over some water, a bit of ice, snow there. X-Drive, no problemo. Right, the window can go back up. I think you get the message. <laughs> But also, like, the road I'm going along now is super, super tight. Now, if I was to go along here on day one in this car, to be fair, you know, left-hand drive, it takes a bit of getting used to. Big cars always do, especially when you, you're driving on the wrong side, effectively, for me anyway. But now I know the dimensions of the car, it feels like, it feels like I could be rallying along here. It's just, that's not right. This is a big, a long wheelbase 7 Series. Now part of the reason this car is so good and so agile on the road is obviously because Alpina have played with the already very good suspension setup that was on the base seven. They're so good with fettling with suspension as I found out on the smaller cars, the D3s and the B3s, etc. This car takes it to a whole new level really because when you're considering the weight that is in this thing and what the suspension has to manage when you're really pushing on and on a sort of alpine pass, it's, it's mind boggling. In the UK, we only get the rear wheel drive car, but that's not a bad thing because if anything, a rear wheel driven Alpine is always gonna be good fun. Now part of the reason the ride and handling is so good in this car is because it has partial four wheel steer. So the rear wheels, do some of the steering. I think it's up to about 40 k's an hour. They steer in the opposite direction, just slightly, I think four or five degrees to the front wheels. And then as you go above 40 kilometers an hour, they steer in the same direction as the front wheels. So you're always getting the best and the most out of the chassis and the weight of the car. Anything coming up? See that? Pitch it in here. Anything coming? No. Pitch it in. The car also hunkers down 20 millimeters when you go over 240 k's an hour. Now in the UK, unfortunately, that's never gonna happen unless you're on some private land. But out here in Germany, it happens regularly. In fact, we've been doing it several times every day because that's what you do on the Autobahn in Germany. When you have it in Sports Plus, it automatically hunkers down 20 mil. And you can feel that. It feels, not only do all the active dampers stiffen up, but the car feels like it's lower. You feel like you've suddenly just dropped a bit and the handling's just incredible. Now, how agile is this car? Let's demonstrate. I'll spin it around this little bit of tarmac. It's a seven series long wheelbase effectively. the brakes another very impressive part about this car I initially forgot that this was a limo you know after driving it for 10 minutes it's so fast that you forget you're in what you're in you have to sort of look back to remind yourself so when I initially used the brakes for the first time there wasn't that much bite there so I thought they were a bit underpowered but they're not at all they're set up to be like that so obviously if you are using it to carry your passengers or your friends or your family around the brakes are very progressive and they're not too jerky they're not going to throw people forward but when you want them and you push hard down on them there's so much stopping power it's unbelievable but you wouldn't expect anything less good bit of road coming up here it's just so good. Now we were really fortunate to have a full tour of the Alpina factory, something I've always wanted to do because I just wanted to sort of get behind the scenes. I wanted to see the quality of work that went into building such great cars. We were blown away by the amount of manual skilled labor that goes into building one of these cars. But then you go into you know the engineering parts and obviously we couldn't see a lot of the top secret development, but 
every person we met in there was so passionate. They all had smiles in their face, including Andreas, who was my contact over here. He was so passionate about the brand, and he has been since he was a kid. He dreamt of working for Alpina, and now he does. And he's worked for them for like 15 years, and it's just so nice to see that about a brand, you know? It's so awesome. Now there's mass production stuff, it's just low volumes, good quality. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this piece. Today has pretty much been the best day of my life. The best road I've ever driven on. And one of the most incredible, complete cars I've ever had the opportunity to drive. I just can't tell you how amazing this thing is. I'm actually lost for words. Part of that's due to the altitude that we're at. <laughs> and part of it's due to the mind-blowing capabilities of this car. It's just unreal, it really is. I'm going to miss this power, I'm going to miss this luxury, I'm going to miss everything this car does, the practicality, the size of the boot, everything, it's just, I just, I feel so fortunate that I can do this to a 150,000 euro car, you know, it's just, I can experience this and hopefully my passion feeds to you guys and you understand just what an incredible car this is, you know just beautiful please remember to subscribe give us a thumbs up if you like this video thank you alpina thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to get behind the wheel of this amazing car it's just unbelievable mind-blowing mind-blowing and also i'd just like to say a special thanks to robert from heel and toe who i invited along to this trip and has been nothing but incredible He's been the biggest help in the whole world. He hasn't been selfish. He hasn't, you know, he's been insured in this car. He's doing his own videos, which I hope you guys check out. That's me in the Alpina B7, snowy Austria, signing off. Take it easy, guys.